In today's episode of our Stationier Moon Survival Guide, we're going to be showing how to build the airlock. Then we will be covering the secondary issue that we have building the generator to be able to power and solving the power situation by building two additional solar panels. But in order to do them, we would first need to be able to build the electronic sprinter. So let me just pressurize my airlock and make sure that I can sufficiently show you. And there it is, the electronic sprinter. But let's start from scratch and welcome. So the first order of business, we are continuing right where we left off. In the previous episode, we have built the shelter, auto lathe, hydraulic sprinter, and we have prepared what we need to do in order to make the airlock. Today, we are making the airlock and solving the power situation. So those are the steps that are kind of essential when you want to be starting to surviving on the moon. And uh, we have some atmosphere already, so that's why we needed the airlock. We don't want to vent the atmosphere out. There we go. We're going to be changing the location of the battery charger, of the small battery charger, and I'm going to explain why. Right now, we have the power controller unit that's on the outside, and I want to have it on the airlock to be able to exchange the batteries both from inside and outside. So whatever is in the airlock is accessible both from the inside pressurized environment and the outdoor unpressurized environment. While if we had, to, when it was just outside, I realized it has become a little bit of a hindrance. So we're going to be replacing the outer unit with the inner unit. Fortunately, we've got two. So that means now we're going to be doing the following. Let me just quickly see. Auto lathe. Let's see if we can start producing the electronic printers and the cable coil. I think we are first going to go with the cable coil because without the cable coil, there is no electronic printer. And we have consumed all of the cable coil that we could. So we're going to be rerouting a little bit uh, the electricity because we are a little bit wasteful with our cabling, but that's okay. Uh, fortunately, Autolathe can produce cable coils, and if it didn't, I would have been in deep trouble. Right, so let's just align these two. We're going to be putting the curvy here. Let me just make sure that it is oriented in the right direction. It should be a curve going like Neo. Yeah, good. So that means that we are already connected to the grid. What I want to now is to connect this one to the solar panel that's on the top of this square. And we're going to be placing it like this, and then we're going to be rotating this little boy to be connecting directly to the power cable that way. And then we need to repoint the solar panel to point a different way, and then we're, we will be able to cable the situation for additional two solar panels, which I plan to produce, as you saw in the intro. Uh, with that being said, I need a bunch of cable coils because uh, producing the electronic sprinter does require four cable coils. And now I'm just making Autolathe spit out everything that's needed to be able to produce. Now we need, I think, to produce first the airlock. So for the airlock we need a passive vent. Active vent we have gotten already. But passive vent you have to craft yourself. And this is the reason why, Atmo why the printer, you know, this hydraulic pipe bender is kind of a priority early on. So here we go. Here we're going to be putting the passive vent and the active vent must go into the airlock. I was When I was doing research for the episode, I was trying to see if I could do a traverse and for the all intents and purposes, it didn't work out really well. So let me just deconstruct the cable over here because it's a passive vent. We don't need it. And then let me see kit consoles. We need to be taking the kit consoles and the act, but first active vent. Active vent is going to go on the inside of the airlock. We have to turn it the right way up and we need to connect the cabling. So to do that, we're going to take the cable coil and the, you know, the wire cutters because they allow us to splice things in like this. Yeah. All right. So then we put it upwards and just two straight pieces directly into this bad boy. Okay. So now it's on its own power. So we were going to be continuing with construction of the airlock. So the next thing there we're going to need is a sensor and we need a gas sensor. We're going to put it right in the middle. Daylight motion gas sensor. Yeah, that's the one we need. Once again, splicing everything inside. There we go. So it needs to be connected to the same, you know, power slash data network. Right. 
the next thing we need is we need the console and the console will be going up on that wall because on that wall we will be uh, putting the console with everything else. Now that being said, where is my console and the data disk? Obviously I need a data disk and I'm going to be needing the console and the electronic circuit boards for it. So let's place the console first. I usually like to put my airlock right smack in the middle so you know it's really you know up my, in my face when I'm doing it. So here we go and then we need to be splicing the cables just to make sure that we connect the console. Console is going to go hold on rotate that way and then we need another cable that way. And while I'm here I might as well connect this power charger with this one because you never know when we're going to be needing that one. Right. Now we need the circuit board for the co for the atmospherics and I think it's called the airlock. Yeah. Uh, normally, if you were on any atmospheric planet like Mars or Europa, you want the advanced airlock. But uh, on Moon, you can get away with just the regular airlock because outside is vacuum. So, right. Let's put here the, uh, the panel. That's it. It's connected. So now we need to configure it. That's the last piece of the puzzle. And for that, we need a data disk that we already have. Right, let me just put here the stuff that we don't need, like food. We do have duplicates in our uniform, so that's definitely something that we're going to do. Food is low, so might as well, you know, drink some water. Just make sure that we are properly hydrated and take care of the tomato soup. One thing that I need to pay attention to, my helmet is currently open. And I'm doing it because of the latest update, you know. While the helmet is open, you don't have any adverse effects in terms of hygiene. Hygiene is not getting worse. However, if you really close up, your hygiene will be going down and then you have the obvious status effects. Now, we need a lot more iron and copper to be able to, you know, successfully create this atmospheric print, uh, sorry, the electronics printer. And that means that we will need to do some, a little bit of mining. So to be able to properly do the mining, we're not going to need to take our stuff and get out. Okay, fair enough. Console, let me see if we can uh, just, hold on, where's my data disk? Data disk, let's stick it in there. And now let's try and define the airlock. So you want to do it that first you say glass door exterior. I hope that they fixed that. Gas sensor, glass door interior and also an active vent. Those need to be connected. And when you take it out, cycle to exterior. Look, seems to be working. Let's try it out. Cycle to exterior and close up and depressurizing. Well, that work works pretty well, actually. Right. Having said that, uh, you have... Oh, I realized I should be closing up the helmet. Oh, I almost choked to, choked to death. Well, that's definitely a problem. All right. So, let me see if I can do a little bit of mining. Now, we need copper, we need uh, gold, and we need, uh, the, we need the iron. These three resources will be mighty important for us to be able to do anything of the sort. So, let's see. Here we go. Beautiful. And where is my mining tool? And let us get off to the mining section of the video. Also, when you're going out and about, especially on the moon, because you don't have this, you have this harsh lighting. So what you want to be doing, you want to keep, constantly keep track of the relative direction on the compass, where is your either lander or the base. Basically, you need something to be able to find. It's not a big of a problem right now when all the resources are very close to us. However, later on, when we're going to be scouting out much further out, you either have to have a track buoy or something or tracker or you just make sure that you mark the direction in which your base is at and that's a, usually a cheap trick how you can avoid spending power for the tracker or anything like that and it's kind of very easy to find your way back especially if you get encounter troubles like on atmospheric planets like getting into a storm or anything like that right okay so we did manage to pick up a decent chunk of uh, of iron. 
Now let's try and see if we can find some other resources. The resources that I'm after, I'm gonna take a little bit of oxide because we're gonna need a little bit more of oxygen. The easiest way how to produce oxygen was not opening the valve of the tank that I was using. Uh, thank you for your comments. It was more along the lines, just chucking in a bunch of ice oxides inside and let them melt. So yeah. Right, all right, let's see, what do we have here? We do have here, is this ice actually? Seems like ice. Okay, this is nitricy. I don't need nitricy at the moment. Uh, what I would need is coal. Coal is a good replacement for the solar electricity in the, me in the beginning because you do need the solid state generator. If you ran out of power during the night, we don't have these big batteries that could do all kinds of wonders. So for us, it's kind of important to have a backup system and a backup system being the solid generator, you just basically cram a bit of coal inside and let it simmer. So yeah, that's sort of a way. Now, okay, I have coal, I have iron, I would really like to get some copper. Copper apparently is available here, so if I go and just, you know, mine it, I will be able to get some, but we're gonna need quite a lot of copper in the beginning, especially because we need to produce copper wires, you know, everything that we do needs copper, and cable coil is especially, I mean, you know, when you do it, it kind of takes a lot of copper away. Later on, if you're gonna be doing some logic chips, for those you're gonna need both copper and gold, but uh, we do already have some gold, so I think my priority is copper at the moment. We might also pick up a little bit of silicone. I think we totaled around 20-ish in the previous episode, so I think we're fine for now. However, whenever I can find copper, copper is a resource you're always gonna be using tons of. So there we go, okay, and, oh, and coal. When I see coal, I'm not saying no. I'm just picking it up as much as I can and making sure that, well, you know, copper and coal. Well, this is my, you know, dream resource. So while we're here, we're just gonna be plucking it out and everything will be perfect. There we go, beautiful. See how it works. It works wonders and I could not be happier. Right, there we go, awesome. More coal? Yes, please. Okay, so the sun is high and I don't want to be spending my entire day mining. And apparently, since we are kind of out of resource, let's just dig ourselves out of this hole. You could use the jetpack, but why? Okay, there's the lander over that way. Oh, and I did see a little bit more coal. Coal? Yes, please. I'm going to pick up some more. After all, in the beginning, coal is really important. Later on, a little less so. It's more important to make steel later on, but let me just see, is there any more copper? Because I'm still rather low on copper. I would like if I could get a full stack of copper, like, you know, 50, and then I'm happy. Okay, this area seems to be quite rich with copper, so let us try and dig some more. Okay, 50. Oh, now, now we're talking. So now we have a full stack of copper. Marvelous. Beautiful. All right. I think that's pretty much enough. So let's see if we can go back to the base and start building. All right, so with all that copper mined, we are going back to the base and we are gonna be building a lot of stuff. We have used day pretty productively, if I dare say so myself. And uh, yeah, we're, we're just gonna go and smelt a lot of things. Now, having said that, where is my mining stuff. I just want to drag it out so I can start smelting these things. So what do we have? We have an iron ore, which we're gonna just be smelting into ingots. There we go. Hit it away, Ike. And uh, oxides I'm gonna keep in the mining belt because if you keep them in the mining belt, they won't melt. However, if you take them outside of the mining belt, they're gonna be melting like crazy. Now we have to take a little bit of a wait while uh, this material smelts because then we will be able to build our stuff. Okay, we can put the battery here, we can flip the switch on and in theory what I could do, I could be rotating that uh, solar panel over there that's above. Uh, however, it's still sunshine and the battery there hasn't been yet consumed so I'm thinking I'm still want to be keeping that one for the time being. So the other one is just basically right, like a redundant backup, if you will. 
All right, let's we see. We, okay, there we go. Another iron piece has been smelted. So now we're gonna be smelting this tiny piece of copper. Copper takes a much longer time to smelt. So that's why I'm first smelting the small chunks because while we are melting the bigger chunks, I could be doing other things. Right, so let's build two more iron frames, I think, and let's place them. Well, that one wasn't needed. All right, that doesn't matter. Let's place these two over here and then we're gonna be welding them up. I still have to produce the iron sheets because I cannot be doing iron sheets. And on these two places we're gonna be putting the we're gonna be putting the copper um, the solar panels, the additional solar panels. Right. So additional part is being smelted here. So I've put a bigger chunk of copper to be produced. And that one is going to be smelting quite a while. Let me just double check. Uh, oh, here's the solid generator. So my idea was that the solid generator should be on the opposite side of the door because that one we're going to be dragging the cable upwards. And from that side, we will be able to let me just make sure that it's properly aligned one out. Yeah, there we go. And then just dragging the cable outward and making sure that it can, you know, properly supply power. However, we don't have enough cable coil, so that's the reason why I'm waiting for the smelter to finish. So the final pieces of copper are being smelted, and as they are finished, then we're probably going to be chucking in this little bit. Okay, there is the copper, finally, and let me see if I can drag this little piece of iron ore. That one should be smelted very quickly, because iron gets melted really really quickly so once that's done we're going to be going inside and then we're going to be building the rest of the things that we need and we might even you know rotate this solar panel that's above so that's the idea okay we still have enough power in our suit and that's kind of important to know area power control will you be finishing right about now come on please finish up there we go beautiful Okay, closing off the arc furnace, picking up the produce, and uh, then we could be swapping out the belts. And let me first go and uh, re reposition the solar panel, because now we're switching from the outside panel to the inside. Sorry, not panel, but um, APU, the control unit, right. So we need first the crowbar to dismount the solar panel. And then we're going to be needing the uh, drill to dismantle the solar panel. They're easily deconstructed. Those are the basic solar panels. They don't produce a lot of power, but they're very useful starting early on. Right. And that means that this cable coil has become free. So I can actually pick it up and look how much cable coil we have wasted all the way around here. We could have done much more efficiently. I agree. So that means that we can also grab this cable coil that's going all the way here and we can be using this to basically power everything on. Beautiful. And now I want to be using this cable coil to drag the cable all the way to the, you know, solid state generator. This is connected. There we go. And we're going to be moving it to that section over there. And there we're going to have the solid state generator plus some additional power thingies. Two. And I cannot have it central, but I need to have it one further away because of the pipe that is required for that. Yeah, some people with OCD are going to see that as a problem. And I know, and I honestly don't, I don't care. <laughs> I also have sometimes problems with it. A mice OCD when it kicks in, it's terrible. Now, there we go. Let's see. We go, we put the circle, or sorry, curve, and there we go. So here we will be connecting the next basic solar panel that we are able to produce. However, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be entering right now. Let's cycle the airlock, shall we? And now we should be able to produce, hopefully, the electronic sprinter. That's the next task. So powering up this, let's go queue up the electronic sprinter. That one actually takes quite a long time to produce. And I'm a little bit, you know, hesitant to make it, but let's see, 50 iron and we put in 50 of the, yeah, copper and now please produce everything that I need. 
Okay, so that's the electronic sprinter queued up. We do have problems with this power suit. I can actually get away with the putting data disk and iron frames out because we don't need them. Food we still have inside and let's just hope we will be able to produce. Okay, we're gonna be moving the portable gas, gas tank to this side over here because I think if we put it on the right hand side, then on the left hand side we have ensured that we have enough place for the electronic sprinter. It's 29%, beautiful. So it does take a while as said, and I'm really hoping that it will be able to finish before the battery runs out. Oh, I, I jinxed it just now, didn't I? Yeah, surely I did. Okay, so thinking about that probably means that this battery won't last that long. Let's see, can we try and build it? Oh, and it starts from scratch, it's not resuming. Oh, oh, that means we're, this battery is gonna run out for sure. So what would be the correct way to approach it? I mean, I'm gonna need, yeah. Look at how quickly it's consuming this battery. It's consuming it like it's no tomorrow. So auto lathe, building electronic sprinter, we don't have enough battery just to do that. Oh boy. Now I understand why these batteries are in trouble. Okay, don't produce that, rather produce a lot more cable coil. My alternative plan is to have this be a little bit assisted by the solid state generator. So if I am able to produce enough cables to hook up the solid state generator, I could be shoving up that lump of coal up its throat and while we are producing the electronic sprinter, I would be also using the solid state generator to basically power up the whole shenanigan. If we're able to do that in that way, that means that we could ultimately be able to produce the you know, the electronic sprinter. Oh, the battery is getting dangerously low and I'm really worried. Okay, we're gonna turn this thing off. I really need the, the airlock to work. So please, cycle the airlock to the exterior. Will ya? Okay, I've checked my helmet. Helmet is closed. Good. Right, okay, we were able to cycle it outwards and now let's see, do we have enough cable coil to hook this bad boy up? Because if we can, we're saved. We're not gonna have any problems. Oh yeah, we do. Look at that. Sure, this is gonna work. Beautiful. Put it this side, okay. That's definitely gonna work. Perfect, so now that we have this junction over here, we put the cables back and now we can actually shove that lump of coal up its nose and then everything will be beautiful. Right, 27%, let's replace the battery, hook it up here, that already produces some base electricity and then putting up the coal over here should be making enough power to produce and to create the electronic sprinter. Okay, let's see. This should hopefully solve our problem that we had just now. And I'm gonna be making sure that even those guys are being, you know, refueled because power generator is creating a lot of power. So now, please, quickly, while we are being supplied with extra power, create the electronic sprinter. Sometimes, guys, you have to think about backup. So right now we are consuming a lot of electricity, but we are producing even more and it's not really efficient. We need to create our furnace and uh, we need to create our bigger batteries that will be ultimately hosting electricity. However, for the time being, I don't see other solution than just, you know, rolling over with this. Right. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna skip to the part where, you know, electronics printer is built. All right, we are at 98%, which means it's gonna get done right about now. Oh, stop the building, we don't need another one, but please do build more cable coil because we're gonna be needing a lot of those. Okay, now let's talk placement. Electronic sprinter should be aligned with this bad boy with enough room that we can walk between those. All right, that's good enough for me and now we all need to be doing first, we need the iron sheets because we're gonna be needing two iron sheets for the electronic sprinter, plus I think two additional for those frames that we have built where we will be putting some extra solar panels. So that's a total of four, but let's put two more for good measure or, you know, three, whatever, four. Right, okay. 
So having said that, let's put the cable coil and now you'll just be printing the cable coil. So now we have do have a problem. We we need to use this welder and our, this welder actually produces a lot of heat and electricity, sorry, heat. Uh, so we should be using it very sparingly. Look, we have raised the temperature by five degrees Celsius by using it for a few seconds. So you have to be really, really careful when you're using it that you don't overdo it. Right, okay, so let's go. And now we have to do the plastic sheets once again, quickly. Bzzzt. All right, there we go. And the temperature is already, you know, 39 degrees. It's, it's terrible, I mean, We'll have to obviously vent a little bit of atmosphere and there is some pollutants detected, but we have to be really careful. All right, let's see, what else do we have here? Now, we do need to extend the cables all the way to the electronics printer. And I think it's power port, we, it's data port we don't need to hook up yet, but it's power port we really need to. All right, where's my screwdriver? I just need to fix up the screwdriver. Where is it? There we go, and it is constructed. So the next order of business is constructing a lot more cable coil and three solar panels, or two solar panels, three of them in total, yeah. So the three solar panels should be able to outperform our consumption because we are not that high on the consumption. And after we're done with that, we'll have to increase the storage, obviously. Now, electronics printer, we cannot produce the regular solar panel. For that one, we will need steel. But for the, you know, basic solar panels, I think we're going to be good. We're going to be creating two of those. I can see that we can print out two, so we're going to be creating two of them. Ingot iron, and there we go. Beautiful. Okay. Now... Once those two solar panels are built, we're going to be hooking them up on the roof. And we'll also need to print out quite a bit of, you know, cable coils just to make sure that we can hook up everything. And when we're done with that, we have solved our power situation at least for some time. So the next thing what we'll need to be doing is probably sorting out water at some point. And we'll also need to fix, make sure that we can do the uh, steel at some point. Yeah, but uh, we do have two potential problems. The power in our suit is low and another we have that the waste tank is getting full. So that's also something that we will need to be tackling probably within the scope of the next episode though. Within the, with this one we're gonna be finishing up the solar panels and let's hook them up. Okay, so now cable coil please. And plenty of it. Now, the good thing about the electronics printer, it's much more efficient when printing out cable coil, it's much faster, and it can do it really, really, you know, quickly. So just look at that. It's just, you know, printing them like there's no tomorrow. So once all of them are done, then we can go up and hook up our electricity and, you know, sing kumbaya around the campfire. Okay, or electric light. Right. I'm thinking like 15, 16 should be enough. Okay, close machine off and we should probably go be going outside. Our battery, oh look, it's green and those two smaller ones are blue. Okay, my helmet is closed. I've made it a point that every time I go out, I do check it out because I don't want to die a horrible death. Yeah, what can I tell you? Okay, so let's go upwards, jetpack and now. Let us put, first we need to actually weld this. Did I take the, I did, the iron sheets, good. And I did take the welder. So here I don't care if I weld longer or shorter periods. And I'm gonna weld it just once. I don't need it to be airtight, he, these two pieces. These two pieces can just be, you know, regular old schmoes because I only need to be able to walk on them. There we go, okay. So, oh, look at that. It's already 2000 degrees heating. My God, this, this, this still is insane. Right. Now, having said that, let us go upwards and now we need to be putting the solar panels. So, solar panel, we put this away. Solar panels we put and now let's hook it up. Yellow means connected and let's place another one next to it, pointing in the same direction. Where are my glass sheets? Glass sheet one, glass sheet two, solar panels ready, and the second one needs to be hooked up though. Right, 
All right, where's my cable? And there's my tool. There we go. Splicing it in. Splicing it. Oh, I fell down again. Oh boy. Come on, let's connect those and then we're going to be good. There we go. Come on, where did it go now? Two more cables coming in. One, two, and three. There we go. That's power production sorted out for you. And I think actually it's going to be working from now on. So nowadays we're going to have different problems and different problems being the water and everything. Look at this. Battery is full. We can just swap out the battery and it's going to get recharged. No problem whatsoever. Also with uh, this permanent setup, I think this looks good. What do you guys think? By the way, guys, if you like this uh, playthrough, do fling a like at it and hit subscribe for more guides that will be coming. And I will be seeing you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundforks signing off.